What is up everybody? Hello! Welcome back to the stream as we slowly fade out the Pile Wing 64 original soundtrack. Such a great game. I have such fun memories of playing the Japanese version of that game uh, when the Nintendo 64 had not yet released in the United States. Uh, it had been out in Japan. Uh, it came out three months before and I was able to get my hands on it ahead of time and awesome memories abound. Still love that game. I think it's highly, highly underrated. But uh, what's up? So back to streaming yesterday the last two days i've been playing yakuza zero and i absolutely hated the game it just was not for me 
I could not get past the broken combat mechanics and like you just randomly lose control of your character like no inputs would go through at all for like five seconds at a time i don't know if that's just how they developed the game or if it's a quirk in the pc version and i don't care i'm not going back to it so it is uninstalled it is off my computer i am done with that series so tonight it was would normally be my break night anyway so i'm gonna be playing a game starting off at least uh that was recommended to me i can't remember i apologize first off uh I, it, it was either friendly tiger or no vultures who suggested this game to me because i was asking for like different game suggestions to possibly stream in the future and brought up phantom 2040 for the super nintendo which is a fun game i have not played this game in quite some time pardon me i remember renting it and never owned it but i did rent it let's get retro arch up here there we go and I remember it being really good. So for whatever reason, I don't have it in my collection. So I do need to put some money in the bank. And I'm going to be left daily looking to add that into my collection. It's a platformer game. But what's interesting about it is that it's kind of open world-ish. It's like it gives you a lot of freedom to choose where you're going to go and to tackle the game. So it's a lot of, of different things you can go different paths. I remember like when I rented the game, I'd always go a certain direction. And then the last time I played it, I went a completely opposite direction. I ended up with like different levels and different weapons and all sorts of crazy stuff. So I'm really, really excited to go back and play this game. Uh, so if, if Friendly Tiger or No Vultures, like I said, I apologize. I can't remember which one it was. I've learned for the future if somebody recommends a game for me to play to write not only down the game itself, but also who recommended it to me. So I don't have that snafu again in the future. But... Uh, whoever it was, thank you very much for recommending it. So we're going to start it up right now. I do also plan, uh, after playing this for a little bit, uh, we'll see how this goes. I might switch over to Killer Instinct, the new Killer Instinct. Uh, and so, like, yeah, start playing that as well. Yeah, so if you have, like, a game you want to kind of recommend, you know, that I can play Shiro, just let me know, by all means. I'm always open to suggestions, you know, for, like, kind of off days for things to stream. It doesn't mean I'm going to actually play it, but... You know, it might come up there. It might be something, you know, I, I might do. So I've seen like other streamers and actually, you know, they're like, yeah, I'll play it. If you give me like $20 or if you win the monthly top three donor slots, so like, you know, I'll play the game. And that's fine for people who want to run their streams that way. But I don't like, like I said, I don't ask for bits. I don't ask for subscribers or anything like that. I just do this for fun. So. You know, I'm never going to say, like, you have to pay me money or anything for me to play the game. And, uh, there we go. Say, so, oh, crap, RetroArch crashed. It did not. Perfect. Pulled up. Not just about anything, really. I mean, it. of course, it's going to help if I have the game. But if it's able to be emulated, that does make things a lot easier. Uh, if it's on Steam, I might already have it, so you never know. Let's see, transform center screen. So what are you thinking? By the way, welcome back to the stream, I should say, first off. Okay, that's cool. So if you're thinking something, just let me know. And of course, as always, let me know if I need to readjust the audio or anything for the game. World. I don't think I've heard of that one. Or El Sword. I'm not sure what it is. El Sword. No. There we go. Looks like a free to play game. Nimix! What's up? Good to see you again. So it looks like it is on Steam. And side scroller. Okay, I'll write it down. Check it out. On Steam. Shiro. Was 
looks like he uh, by the white rabbit himself or herself i don't know i've thanks to the internet everybody is different all right always slow comes with tasses still with no population yeah that's the thing i saw like and were you telling me the good news that like hey it's been approved for moons but it's like it still hasn't published it out yet <laughs> it's like but then i i looked like at the taskvideos.org like for the the waiting for votes and stuff they have games that have been like, sitting there for like two and a half months it's like come on guys chip chop let's go so there is like no options for this game and then he jumps to his death Yeah, so I remember this game being a lot of fun. I'm hoping that still holds true. Remember, there's like some kind of lab, and then all of a sudden, yeah, they get attacked and it blows up. Yeah, I remember like the first time they mix, like you, you put through the first version of Krusty, and that was approved in like a week and a half and up. It was pretty quick compared to this time. I don't know if they don't have enough people or what. Old African relic in the ghost jungle. Can you identify it? Perhaps. I just want to know why my face is so incredibly long. I'm really curious about, and then explosion. Nope, nothing. Okay, never mind. So later, I recall you do have homework to do. Oh. Wait, wait. I, so he's concerned about me doing homework, but I just got back from a place that has a ghost jungle, which indicates it's probably far away. Okay. Kablooey! Now, this game also did come out for the Sega Genesis, but I did, I've never played that version, to be honest. So I have no idea what it is, So I, but I have played the Super Nintendo version of this game. And if memory serves me right, there is also a cartoon in like either the late 70s or early 80s, I want to say, that the Phantom was also a part of. It was kind of like an Avengers, but like C, D list Avengers type deal. So what's interesting about this game is you actually have like a free map. So like after you beat the introductory part, you actually can go different directions in different places. So like right now you have access to nothing because you're in the main building of the university where you need to go. Okay, so... Outside University. Oh no! Think I can grab onto this? Nope. Yeah, you can. Okay. Aha! Traversal! Yeah, this is definitely one of those games that's like, okay, fire indeed hot. That, uh, you know, it's got that compressed sound. Which Super Nintendo did have compressed sound for a lot of their stuff, because, I mean, they were doing sound sampling instead. Whereas the Genesis was basically creating stuff off the sound chip on the fly. And, let's see, I think there was different guns... Yeah, there was different guns you can you can get, like stuff for like homing missiles, the breaker, boomerang, devastator. I think you just have to like pick up the different ammo types for it. You also do not have infinite ammo, so the So the gray bar you have, basically like or the orange bar I should say. That didn't work well. So there is an orange bar, which is your ammo bar. I'm trying to spit out and failing to do. Oh, cool. So you can, like I said, indeed fire, indeed hot, but... So it looks like you can, if you get the controls right, climb up walls. So you have a dash. Yeah, a lot of movement. So basically, it's the future, and Skynet is attacking apparently with all these Terminators that are kind of knockoff versions. I mean, they're not very well constructed. 
seem very fragile. I mean, I don't remember Arnold going to pieces with, like, one shot. Okay, what is this thing? Oh, yes, you have a lot of ammo. Okay, so you can't... Oh, I can jump through the floor. Okay. I'm guessing that's some kind of password or key card. So I was hoping it would be kind of like Contra, where you can shoot, and like if you start shooting the gun, like you stay stationary. Uh, Gunstar Heroes, I think, had it up. No, Gunstar Heroes actually had two options. Either one, you can run and gun like traditional Contra, or if you started to shoot, you'd automatically lock in place. But you could do eight-way directional firing a lot easier. So if I had stole our computer chip research for Oines or Oines Industry, I'm not sure, then destroyed the lab, Archer simply vanished. Uh, that actually gives me some ideas for other games to play. Let's see here. Gunstar Heroes. Uh, some Contra games as well. Games. Let's see. Three. PS2 one. By the way, like I like Contra games, but I'm absolutely garbage at them. So that would be kind of interesting to watch me stream that sometime and feel miserably. And Nimix, if you just came into it a, a little bit later, uh, basically, um, I'm playing Phantom 2040 for the Super Nintendo, and this was a suggestion, like I said, I, I can't remember, and I, I'm, I, this is something I've learned to do now, is write down a game, like the name, as well as whoever recommended it. But it was either recommended by No Vultures or Friendly Tiger to play this game. So I do see suggestions to play games, so if you have anything you want to see me play, well actually you've done that before in the past, like Dragon's Lair, uh, just let me know and like I said I'll add it to the list. Not a guarantee I'll play it, but you know, I'm always looking for stuff to do on stream. Okay, too coincidental for him not to be involved. I just want to imagine he has like a Batman voice. Alliance Industries, where is it? Rachel! Yeah, I can't do that. It's kind of shouting and kills my voice. Down the warehouse of district here. Take my key card, it'll get you in. Good, let's move. I'm sure you'll slow me down by being old and frail and... Oh! So... They put out the fire, I guess? Alright. You're in the uh, university lab exploded and Archer vanished. Uh, tech gave me a key card to a warehouse. He suspects Archer was involved. This picture compared to the spray is very different. I would definitely agree. You see, my, my character there on screen looks reasonably well exercised and buff, and then the version on the left looks like he hasn't eaten in a while and probably weighs about 110 pounds total. I mean, it's Super Nintendo. I mean, this is like a 20, 23-year-old game, but I mean... It could have tried to got a little closer, I guess. But I mean, this is based off an old, from from my knowledge, an old radio serial and then a uh, comic. And I know they did a terrible Billy Zane movie. Uh, but yeah, it's like, it's basically kind of based on, on things of the past. So I guess maybe like the, the portrait shots were kind of based on that art. Is what I'm just going to take a random guess at, not having done any research about this. See, I agree, several bots leaving at the time of the blast must have had something to do with it. Tech gave me a warehouse key card. I'll start there. Okay. Yes. To uh, quote the Simpsons, Homer Simpson, Kids, you tried and you failed miserably. The lesson learned is never try. Yeah, so it basically, there's, like I said, it's like you have access to a lot of areas right now, right off the bat. But it's up to you to decide where you're going to go, and I wasn't paying attention to where I should be going, so... Go me. I think it's like the industrial area, I think. Blam blam! Okay. So what else do I have here on the menu now? I have emergency aid kit and a first aid kit. I'm guessing this might be for weapons? Warehouse keycard. Oh, so the warehouse. So I probably should have gone to the warehouse, yeah?
Uh-oh. I can't exit out of a level. <laughs> Uh-oh. Stink. At least you have like a lot of. Oh, I'm dead. At least you have mobility though. Oh, I was hoping that would bring me out to level select. It did not. I'm not sure what that's going to entail. You know, it just seems like this is a place is a massive OSHA violation. You know, there's just like open fires and death robots everywhere. You know, it's, it's got to be really inconvenient. Like, where do you work on the top floor and you got to keep making these perilous jumps? I mean, it just seems very inconvenient. Well, yeah, I mean, you're the Phantom. I mean, you can shrug off blows that would kill normal people. Most people. Everybody. Why? Because you have the power of the purple suit. Come back! Spider-Man. Okay, so you fall through some, but not other pipes. Hmm. So I'm guessing these might be either doors I'm opening up, or I have to defeat like four of these little key logs me in order to progress further. Because I'm just taking random gab, like random stabs in the dark here about what my objective is. Okay. That was a thing. Industrial Zone 2. I remember at one point when I played this years ago. No, not really. Uh, that's what I thought was kind of interesting about this game back in the day, was that it was very kind of freeform, like you could just go anywhere you wanted to pretty much. I remember when I rented this, I remember talking like 23, 24 years ago when this game came out. Uh, like, fighting against this like big kind of like, big giant robot took up almost most of the screen, like on the left side of the screen. And I remember just like beating me up, but I remember that memory at least. Okay, so... I have hit a dead end, okay. And just me, or do they have like, it's like a combination of a Predator and a Terminator. Ooh, I thought of another game I haven't played in a long time either. Blackthorn. Love that game. All sorts of good stuff tonight. So what'd you get? If you figured out something, please tell me. So I'm guessing, like I said, there's a zero there. So of course, if you blow that up there, it, all the ones with the zeros would open up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you came to the same conclusion I did, or I came to the same conclusion you did. I'll give you credit on that since you did type first that you got it before I did, so. Okay, 
let's see what's up here. Oh, so they can fly through... Oh, that's good. So they can fly through walls. That's good to know. Did this get blown up or something? No, it cannot. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I thought that was like maybe one of the breakable doors. It is not. I still don't have any other weapons, huh? I can punch people. Ugh! Captain Punch Face. Yeah, Phantom 2040 for Smash. Ugh. Okay, I gotta say, I am impressed if you can punch a robot and explode it. Because I'm sure I'd punch a robot and then cry for like a week as my hand is broken in horribly multiple places. Find the rope extension. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, so I've been through here, so I'll make sure I'm not missing something. Oh, that hurt. Okay. As far as I can tell, unless it's something like I can't see and like I'm colorblind to. I thought I heard something different based on music. Unless it's like something I'm, I'm possibly colorblind to, which is entirely possible. It seems like the doors that are able to be shot or the walls that are able to be shot and explode are not really marked. Because like I'm listening like for audio clues, like it makes a different sound if it, you can shoot it and blow it up. But I'm not seeing anything visually that tells me, like, this wall can be shot and exploded to go through or not. Okay, so... Like that. Well, there's the rope extender. I found it. Just need to get in there now. the exit okay cool so if I ever see a skull on the ground I can jump through it and go there so warehouse is what they told me I need to go to we had the warehouse key warehouse and docks so this is where I was supposed to go oops perhaps I should pay more attention in the future yes yeah, so this is an exit point apparently cool all right Alright, 
city docks. Oh, they dropped me off the lift. You know, it's always important that whenever you move, you have to do it in the most acrobatic way possible. Front flips are the most effective way to get anywhere, and also if you're trying to dodge bullets, back flips work amazingly too. You can probably dodge a nuclear bomb and blast just by simply flipping. I'm dead. But I'm alive! Okay, so it looks like this mechanic's gonna hold true for, like, the opening doors and stuff. Agile games used to be like that. Why is like that? Yeah. You can hit one if you, like, Goomba falls to ground one up, falls can continue to level instead of get booted out and forced to retry. Yeah, this would be a real pain in the butt if you were to, like, constantly just get thrown out of the game for, like, every time you died. That would pretty much make it all play. We'll see how large these levels are. Now, I'm not sure what the skulls do. Oh, the skulls are health. Okay. I mean, universal sign for, for skulls is usually not one of health. Blemo! There's a number one door. Okay then, well that was kind of a waste. Let's go back down. At least fall damage is not a thing. Cause I mean, I hate it when games have fall damage. Sir, could you please open the door for me? Sir? No, okay, you can't do anything. It's like, huh, maybe you can access a terminal or something. No. Pew pew pew! Huh, okay. But you can access these computers. Robot Man! Stop sniveling, scene. Yes, I'm calling him scene, not John. I'm saying it as it is spelled. 
warehouse will explode before the police investigate. The countdown sequence has begun. Oh, don't tell me I have to try to find my way back out of here. <laughs> there is one who knows of my connection. The man standing right behind you. Archer, he's scheduled for termination. Wow, Inspector Gadget looks really weird on the screen there. Bring back the Black Panther, Tracker, or die like a dog. Power down, Tin Man. It was too easy to pass up. I chat, but I'm meeting with a wealthy collector. Excuse me while I continue to narrate my obvious evil plans while there's a superhero like 10 feet behind me. <laughs> Mars, do what you must, but Maxim Inc. needs the Panther alive. Now, I'm sure, like, probably these people are all explained in either an instruction manual or a comic or something, but it's like, I have no idea who these people are. Heard enough, Graft? I thought his name was Tracker. No matter. Phantom! Those are the last words you'll ever hear. Is it now? Yeah, this stupid thing. See if this is actually a ammo refill. I'm crossing my fingers here. Okay, how do I use items? There we go, X, it is. Alright, cool. Now we'll use the first aid as well. guy down. Where's Archer and why does Maxim Inc. want him dead? I don't know. What about that panther? Don't worry, he'll soon, he'll soon become extinct and so will you. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, this is a game over. Sorry, you didn't run away. in. Enforcers, any hints who blew the university lab warehouse to nanobits? Yes, I know it's the future when the phrase nanobits is used like freely and people look like they are from Contra. The Phantom was seen fleeing both these crimes. Remember, this is what the future is going to be like in 21 years from now. Just take note. Okay, well, we're back here to the city docks. Lipstick, I would definitely agree. Let's see if I can do this swing out and grab up and climb. 
Ah, there's nothing up there. Okay. Still feels like I should be able to access something in those computers. Get up there. I will continue to try to get up there. <laughs> Aha, health. All right. Well worth it. Trackers in the industrial sector. The gunship arrives there shortly. Oh, goody, a gunship. That sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Good. Ready your troops for battle. So I did pick up a weapon called a breaker. So it works, but it's kind of a delay, so not really seeing the point of it. So now we've gotten the Contra. Probably the rope would be better. Are we stealing the literally stealing a panther? Okay. That's where we were last time when I was in the wrong area completely. So I think in here is where possibly the rope extender is. Like in this beginning part, we'll see. No, go to industrial zone one, okay. Oh. Hi. So I'm make sure I'm not missing something. And I was not. I want to see if it tells me to go back to one. 
Yeah, okay, so it does tell you, at least goes give you some hints on where you need to be. Spin up there. See, there's the rope extender. It's gotta find a way over to that part. It's like it's shot in the face. I'm sure it's something like very obvious too. Okay, so I need to keep going up and over to the left apparently. be something like, oh, you're supposed to jump through the floor here, and there's, like, no indications that you're able to do that. Stupidly simple that I should have paid attention to. Yes, that was too easy. So let's see what it tells me as a hint when I walk in here, if any. Zero zone one or two. Me count gooder. Follow tracker. Okay. So this is where the guy ran off with the panther. Okay. <laughs> 
Let me up there. Come on. There we go. looking over the 50 60 streams of this game stop by this one well i am honored because i mean you know phantom 2040 gets played so so much it's really hard to stand out amongst everybody who plays it okay so that is indeed a loop of no return Okay, that, that was a thing that happened. I said, this all just seems like a massive OSHA violation. I mean, this place has to have, like, really great insurance, like, for all the acts like all the workers who keep getting hurt. I would think, at least. My stream hipster, anyhow. <laughs> Seems really weird, unpopular games. Well, you are in the right place. I got both of those for you. Unpopular game and a weird host. Ah, that followed the traditional anime rule where things have to bulge before they explode. my panther yeah ykb is always amazing at announcing she's really really good we, you know i've talked to her a couple times you know off of stream and she's like i don't know if i'm really good for that i'm like you are good at announcing and voiceover stuff it's like if you are not in the career choice that you're in for you know for what you do you probably could have done voiceover work which i'm sure doesn't isn't as stable but yeah she's great at, at doing the mic announcements for HEDQ events. It's not bad. I mean, it's the soundtrack for this is typical Super Nintendo compression because they use samples instead of just generating stuff straight from the sound chip. But there is a Genesis version of this game, and I've never played it, so I might try it for a little bit just to see what it's like sound wise and gameplay too. Pardon me. And it's a pretty decent platformer. Uh, I have a feeling that that would, like, leap to my death if I were to try to go down and grab on and swing underneath. Pretty sure, at least. Central. Fine, I won't get the cool power up then. Well, 
Whoa, I was like, oh crap, I'm gonna die. Now I'm alive. Now I'm dead. Well, game over. As I sit there and ponder my mistakes of what I've done wrong in life. Okay, so... Yeah, well, it, there's still 21 years left, Morg, I mean, before this happens and comes to be, but... So, you die... This sound like Christopher Walken. You die, you don't get a password to continue the game. Very, very weird. They give you a password. Yeah, so, they have a password system, but when you die, you don't get a password whatsoever. Yeah, children, scooch closer. What I tell you about the scooching? Okay, so yeah, that's that. So that is 20 and Phantom 2040 for Super Nintendo. Let's try Sega Genesis. I'm pretty sure it came out on the Genesis as well. Yeah, other than just like, looks like you're sitting on, literally on your throne, probably trying to pass a stool, hoping that those prunes go through because the Phantom is very old, technically. And uh, yeah, I was expecting like a password or something because I saw that there's a password system, but like nothing. And I completed like two areas, so go figure. Pat Riley basketball stream. Oh, well, since you mentioned it. Oh, baby, listen to that Genesis music. Early Genesis music, it sounds like. Yeah, 1990, this is one of the first games they made for the system. Well, this seems broken. <laughs> well, that ROM's completely broken. Uh, let's try... Let's go back to Phantom. Yes, and God help you, if you were playing on a TV that was starting to die, because I had that happen once, and uh, it was like fuzzy, and you couldn't make anything out. Yeah. Not good times. So, so far it's pretty much an identical opening to the Super Nintendo version, just with that wonderful FM sound that the Genesis was known for, and a lot of programmers were just too lazy to figure out how to program for, correctly at least. Alright. So let's give us a quick try and see how this goes. Why do I not have controls? Let's double check options. Let's see, no controls. Sports pad. Uh, three button. There we go. Like when Super Nintendo Genesis had different versions of brands. Yeah, it's... I mean, like, you'd have things... Wow, Extra Lives 9 by default? Whoa. Okay. But, uh... But yeah, it's like, you know, like, for example... Super Nintendo had... Yeah, exactly. I was about to say the same thing there. Contra 3 and Hardcore on Genesis were completely different. And actually, like, the American version of Hardcore was Hardcore. Uh, it was a lot harder. The Japanese version actually gave you like three hits before you die. Pardon me, so it was a little bit easier. The 
graphics are definitely taking a hit, too. I mean, Genesis had a lot more limited colors when it comes to, like, the Super Nintendo, what they were able to do with it. I mean, it's just basically the Super Nintendo was, like, two years newer hardware, and it was, like, the last time that, like, Nintendo actually did kind of, like, newer stuff before they started just going back and cheaping out on all their consoles. Yes, we know what happens. Stuff blows up. University, let's go. Oh man, so default controls are A is shoot, B is your whip, and C is jump. So if you're playing this in a three button controller layout, that's really weird. I mean, you gotta jump, you gotta move your thumbs far between jump and shoot. And there's no way, to my knowledge, in this game to redo your controls. Oh, I kind of like the sound of the gun in this version. I don't know, it, it's kind of interesting. I think like this has actually a little more detail in the backgrounds. Although the sprite seems to be a little bit smaller. Also, the life bar is very close. Like, the, the Super Nintendo had, like, different colors, like green for life and then orange for your ammo, and this one's like, kind of like yellowish orange for everything all together. More sound effects too, so it's kind of interesting to actually see the different versions. I mean, things are kind of harder to make out, like, platforms for me, at least visually. But sound is kind of more interesting for sound effects, in my opinion. Yes, we already know the story. So then you're supposed to go to Warehouse. Wow, that's, that's a new guy. That wasn't in the other versions. Huh. So yeah, different color scheme, different backgrounds. It's kind of interesting. Also, this one doesn't have, like, it doesn't tell you exactly where to go for, like, you know, you're exiting the level. Whereas the Super Nintendo version has, like, a big giant skull to let you know, like, hey, this is where you need to exit. This one doesn't tell you that. Where's the other place I went to? I did go to the industrial area last time, so let's try that real fast to see what it looks like. Oh, holy slow down, Batman. Also, ammo seems to run through a lot faster on the Sega Genesis version. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, though, like, this is actually, I think it was tied into a comic book series instead of, like, the Billy Zane disaster flick. Because, I mean, come on, nobody thought that that movie was going to be good. I didn't even see it, but, like, I don't think I've met a single person in all years who'd be like, dude, that movie was going to be great. I was so hyped up to see it. Not a chance. For me, like, one of the biggest, though, like, games I was ever disappointed in was, uh, 
Bubsy. Oh my god, that game was just terrible. That game was like so hyped up to be like the next biggest thing, and it was just like it's like a it's a case study on how to not do a game really. Yeah, you move so fast, but you have one hit kills. Hitboxes are off, and you take fall damage in a game where you're supposed to be an active, fat, like active, fast platformer. Oh, exactly. Like I said, it's like, and that game was just hyped up to hell and back. And I rented it. I mean, I didn't, I didn't buy it. If I rented it, I just remember being like so disappointed in it. And then the other one that got hyped up and it was a whole bunch of crap was um, Rise of the Robots. Oh my god, I played that before in stream. And that is just terrible. Alright. A free t-shirt with the uh, the exclamation mark for Bubsy. Well, yeah, I would I would probably associate with that too if I didn't know. Like, I mean, it's probably the same Bubsy color, so white t-shirt with the exclamation mark, like in orange or red. So I would probably recognize it, but I'm like a video game nerd, so that wouldn't really surprise me a whole lot. Let's get this resized a little better. Okay, center of the screen, here we go. So let's see, what other games did I mention earlier? Yeah, let's stick with Genesis. Let's do... Gunstar Hero, or the Mega Drive version, which looks, box art looks a little bit cooler, I gotta say. This one, kind of Americanized, doesn't look too great. You're kind of like, hmm, what's going on here? That just looks a little more awesome. Let me just go through and update this real fast, though. Uh, no more Billy Zane. Shooty Mick Shoot Face. All right, so I do own this game on cart. And it's this is one of those games that really, if you have a good Sega Genesis, which outputs sound, which actually it's one of those things I learned in getting the retro collecting, is that Sega Genesis has had like multiple versions and they had different sound chips each one. So you'd have some that had sound, like sounded like pure garbage and some that just sounded amazing. If you have a good Model 2 Genesis or even a Model 1, uh, the 3s are all garbage. This game is another one where they spent time to make the game sound good. I mean, they actually programmed all the sound chips and everything. It sounds pretty amazing. Now keep in mind, while I own this game, I'm not really good at it. That's kind of loud in my ears. Dude, if you have the box for it, it's awesome. I only have this one loose, unfortunately. Let's see, Gunstar, yeah, Gunstar Heroes, Toe Jam, Diamond Heady, that's a good one. Or song I've never heard of. Hardcore, I would love to have in my collection, I don't own that. Currently, yeah, I don't believe this one here. Yeah, Contra Hardcore, complete tested, authentic box. Box card? What? Yeah, oh, so it's a card, okay. So, like, it's like eight bucks. Uh, this game normally sells for, like, usually around $30, $50 or so, depends. Yeah, I'm seeing anywhere between $40 to $60 on eBay for um, Contra Hardcore, at least. 
This is, this is like a weird spin-off for M. Bison before you start getting involved in... Or actually, this is what happened probably after we got beaten in the World Martial Arts Tournament, like, for Street Fighter. Mar yeah, World, World Martial Arts Tournament is Dragon Ball, by the way. Let's see... Star... Heroes... Genesis... So this game is going, on average, around 60 to $70 with Case. Uh, loose is around 20 Huh. Kirby strategy game, interesting. One of the games I like a lot that doesn't get a lot of love, and a lot of people haven't really heard of it, it's called General Chaos. I might play it. It's a really different game. It's fun one player, but like two players where the game really shines. Alright, so let's start this up. Wrong button. Shot. Jump. There we go. And this is still like FM sound, but you can tell they actually programmed the music quite well for this. I'm really curious. I'm gonna try the other core real quick. Pico Drive, see what that sounds like. Just out of curiosity. I know the, the visuals are off on the screen for a second. Sounds about the same, really. Oh, yeah, I like homing. Shot, jump. I made like a sequel to this for the Game Boy Advance, I think it was, and I remember playing it and not liking it at all. Let's see, uh, free shot I do like. Lightning, chaser. So the cool thing with this game, if you've never played like Gunstar Heroes, is you can actually combine weapons to form more powerful versions of it, which can either help you or hurt you, depending upon the enemy's weaknesses. But yeah, I mean, Treasure did this. They also did uh, Mischief Makers on Nintendo 64. They did some pretty good games. Enemies attacking the natives. Save them! There's also a block button. I forgot how to do it. <laughs> it's like, it's like rarely used. You have like a slide attack, you can crouch. It's like contrary, you just got all this crap coming at you. So now I have like a tracer laser which is going all over the place. Or you can just use a straight off laser, or you can just go straight back to the homing. It's all up to you. Yeah, I did not like the, the, the Game Boy Advance one. I just, I mean, it just seemed like too weird for me. Now, was that the Ronald McDonald one? Oh! When 
Let me get my health. Oh, McKids? Yeah. It's funny because they're like, this is, a, this is not a McDonald's game. It's like, it's called McKids. It features the golden arches. It's a McDonald's game. It's good. is a little bit harder depending on what weapon you have, but like I said, I'm kind of playing the easy weapon. Kind of easier-ish. Easier-ish, I guess we could call it. You can see things like, wow, okay, controls. 360 gamepad! This is really good. Yeah, fire and homing is like the best, in my opinion at least. I like it a lot. Usually, like, my luck would not be good for that. It just, like, I usually get screwed over. As you can see, this fight's now gonna take a while because I don't have all the power ups. Let me look it up here. Gunstar Heroes, how to block. Yeah, so you have to hit jump and shoot together at the same time. It reduces down a lot of damage you can take. There we go. I'm sure this is not running the right speed.
Yes, exactly. You get the laser and the homing. Like, if you combine the two weapons together, you can make some truly overpowered things. But of course, you know, like certain enemies, it works well, but then you have other bosses, it doesn't work as well. So, like, at certain points of this game, like, if you don't have, like, a powered up weapon like that, it's like, just start over. Just, just die, start the game over, try again. So the problem with the laser is that it can also, with the homing, it can seek in on things you don't want it to, like that wonderful claw thing is so like the bees that are coming out. Right now, I'm trying to get it to, like, focus on... There we go. If you get hit, then it loses function, so it's like it's trying to grab onto the legs now, which is where you don't want it to go. And this is where you can get bit real hard. No! There's a reason. Give me a second. Pretty sure I have it. I do. All right. Extract here. Yes. Here lies Gunstar Hero. Now, zero. If you've never seen the Running Man movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, you really, really should. It's a terrible movie. It's cheesy, but it's great for just like non stop one liners. Like that and Commando. Or just like one-liners on stop, but I think the Running Man is even better for one-liners from Arnold. Done. You have know, just rapid fire. Every single line just about is a one-liner. But if you've never read the book, The Running Man, I definitely suggest you do that because it is completely different from the movie. It's actually it's written by Richard Bachman, which was Stephen King's pseudonym that he was writing underneath before he got famous. I don't know why he decided that Stephen King wouldn't sell what Richard Bachman would. But it's a completely different setup. Like, The Running Man is still a television show, but it's not on, like, some, you know, underground set design that they have. It's basically you're given $20,000, and you're given a 12-hour head start, and everyone in the country is looking to kill you. So... You basically you have a 12 hour head start and then like if it, let's say after 12 hours has passed you're walking down the street somebody sees you they call in the number like say hey i found the guy you're looking for he's over here they send a death squad to come kill you if they kill you the person who gave the tip who called you in gets like ten thousand bucks and this is like a dystopian future where like everybody's poor as hell so you keep making money the longer you're staying alive and basically your money goes to whoever is the benefactor for who you're playing. The longest the person's ever lived on the show is like six days. And you also have to send in two video clips of yourself every single day. You have to mail them in. They promise that they won't track you down. It's a complete and total lie. Um, but yeah, basically it's like ultimate paranoia. Because he's like, you know, rich, like the guy is going through and he's putting on like disguises and stuff. And... He thinks he's safe, and then he notices, like, these cops start showing up and falling around. It makes you paranoid, but it is an amazing, amazing book. I, I highly recommend reading it. It can be found on Amazon probably for, like, five bucks or under. So, continuing the games that I'm absolutely terrible at. I'm going to switch it up slightly. Let's see, I think I still have this. Yes, I do. Great. Contra for... PlayStation 2. Shattered Soldier. This one is called. And... Okay, so it's focusing on the wrong window. Way to go. 
OBS, you suck. Remove, yes. The problem I have with OBS is every once in a while it just decides like, oh, we're going to start not working correctly. And we're not going to show you things that you've put in that you have set up, or we're just going to focus on an entirely wrong window. Yeah, my friend Pat did that. He went full hardcore into this game, and I never did. I was said, I am terrible at this game. I own it. This is actually one of the rare blue discs. Because when the PlayStation 2 started off... Wow, this is, like, really loud in my ears. So when the PlayStation 2 started off, not all games were DVDs. There was a couple of them that were actually on CDs, just like the PlayStation games were, and this was one of those games. So instead of being, like, um, you know, the standard DVD color, they were actually blue on the bottom. Let me know if this is too loud, or if I need to readjust the audio, because it looks like it's pretty loud. Well, yeah, I just want to make sure it's not, like, too loud, like, blowing me out or the speakers or anything like that. It's really weird, like, this game actually is a sequel to Contra 3. Because you're you're basically you're the same guy who saves the world in Contra Three, and they're like, "Oh, you're a bad guy now." You're you basically been framed for murdering a bunch of people for being a terrorist, so they lock you up, and they're like, "Oh, we need you to go solve our problems again." Yeah, exactly. It's like what? It's like you've killed your partner. Uh, okay. What is etc. Alright, so we've got jump, charge. That's right, you can charge as well. You can charge attacks. Yeah, it's just terrible, lazy writing, really. Now you can switch weapons, you have all these weapons on the fly. You can even charge them up like for a charge shot, do all sorts of neat stuff. There's a hit rate, I've never really been good at that, so I just hold it down and shoot like crazy, I don't care. I'm terrible at these games. Yep. Yeah, it's Contra. You die in one hit. Yeah, this is a get good game. And I am not good at these games, so yeah. I never spent the time to get good at it. 
It's one of those games I bought, I'm like, yeah, it's Contra, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna invest a whole lot of time into this. Get good. Yeah, now, Contra Hardcore for the Sega Genesis, the Mega Drive version, which is the Japanese version, was a little bit different because you basically, uh, it, it was easier because it gave you health. I mean, it's like, you could take three hits before you died. Getting good helps, but it's also, like, you know, the Mark said, there's a lot of memorization involved, too. That'd be 97% of the way through a perfect run. Mystery attack and die. Say a lot of bad words. Yeah, that's that's pretty much playing Contra in a nutshell, really. They say you may notice that the sound's going weird, it's just because it's running on an emulator, so. Oops. Really, game? It threw me off the wall to the left. I did not hit the jump button. It threw me off to the left. I did it, got a perfect S rank run, which meant no deaths, 100% of each stage by killing all key targets. My reward, a clip of gameplay with the developers making funny combat noises over it. Uh, for me, the absolute worst video game reward I got for beating a game was Terminator, Terminator 2, the arcade game. So, the normal ending for the game, if you don't blow up everything in the Cyberdyne level, like every single file cabinet, computer, monitor, everything is you get a black picture, like black and white picture of Edward Furlong, the actor who played John Connor. So it's like, you know, the future is not what we make of it or something like that. They're basically like, you got the bad ending, try again. So you go through Cyberdyne level, you bust your butt, you blow up every single thing in that level. Pardon me. And the end picture, the ending is exactly the same, but now the picture is in color. And it says like, the future is not what we make of it. Good job, you've, you've just saved the future. That's it. You just get a color version of the picture for beating it on hard and, and fighting your way through and hitting everything that you're supposed to get. It's like, I was upset. Well, still, you, you expect to have, like, something, you know, something better than just, like, the developers going, yeah, pew, 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 ha, ah, you know, it's, like, something rewarding for it. Maybe an extra gun or something that was hidden, like, uh, Dead Space 2, which is a game I really need to go back and finish, because my 360 originally died while I was halfway through the game, but if you beat the game on the hardest difficulty, it gives you a finger gun, which is, like, one of those foam sports fingers, but it's, like, the most powerful gun, it kills everybody in one hit. And it literally says, like, bang, 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 when you shoot it. And that's funny. But, I mean, but if you have to beat a game on the hardest difficulty and get all these crazy requirements, do you really want to play through it again at that point? You know, like, what's the point of then giving you a weapon that's overkill when you've proven that you could already rock that game? No problem. 
without difficulty, you know? For me, I just don't see the point of it. Okay, that time it did not throw me over to the edge, so that's good. charge. Yep, and you have, like, no invincibility frames just about. Yeah, exactly, like, um... Well, I like, like, Resident Evil 4 because you get progressively better things, like you could buy the rocket launcher, and then uh, the Chicago typewriter, and then there, I think there was also, like, a double barrel shotgun type deal, hand cannon. Uh, and then, like, if you beat mercenaries with, like, all five stars on every single character for each level, I think it was... Then you get like the laser weapon, which just kills everything outright. But it, it was like, it was more fun to play through with those overpowered weapons. And I'd make a challenge of it, like go through the entire game using only the rocket launcher, which seems like it'd be ridiculously overpowered. But you have to remember there's certain parts where you are in close quarters and that thing can kill you in one hit. So it was kind of fun. Chicago Typewriter was the, the Tommy gun, of course. So it's just like infinite ammo. It, which is, it's funny because they gave you a reload animation, but you never need to reload the gun. But yeah, it was fun because it was, it was progressively moving forward. Yeah, we're not going to save that because there's nothing to save, really. Alright, so we're going to move back to... Ooh, look at all the mice, the Mises. Move back to RetroArch real quick, since we're doing Contra stuff. I was originally thinking maybe I should go and play like uh, Killer Instinct because I I learned like how to play the new Killer Instinct and I am really really liking that game. But uh, it, tonight's theme seems to be kind of like more of a Contra platformer type deal, so it's kind of taking over that. So let's do the old Super Nintendo version. Actually, no, we'll, we'll stay on Sega Genesis. Let's do. Contra Hardcore. Yes, this is the Japanese version. This is one that's easier, actually. And this is the one that's stupidly hard. Ooh. Let me go through and pull that up real quick. The Halcyon is, is like, I'm surprised In the middle of anybody even knows what that is. I mean, that is, like, stupidly rare. The last time I saw one of those that came up for sale, it was like 5000 bucks starting. And it got higher than that and somebody bought it. And that was like about 15 years ago. But yeah, the American version of this game is really hard. And when it says like hardcore, they are not kidding. Yeah, the Halcyon I don't think ever was sold for retail, for my knowledge, for at least from what I remember, was like it was pretty much prototype stage. They only had like five or six of them in, in existence for the Halcyon. And uh, it's it was kind of like a laser disc type player. Like, so I'm just trying to remember things off the top of my head when I researched it like 20 years ago. But yeah, I don't think it ever went to, I don't think it was ever production. I think it was just prototype and there was only like five or six of them ever made. Love when the start button's not the start button, but okay. So, oh, this helps. I'm wondering if this is core problem. So, I'm like, I should be seeing like an A, B, and C. I think.
And what really bugs me about this game is when people don't say hardcore, they call it hard corpse, like a dead body. It's like, it's hardcore. That's how you say the name, it's not corpse like a dead body. Yeah, and it was like 1983 or 84, I think. 84, I want to say like it's before 1985 at least, the Halcyon. I said, I'm, I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head all these random things I've read years ago. No, okay, that's just what it's going to be. But yeah, it was really expensive back then. It just wasn't going to catch on. There was one game that I think got dumped online. I think I saw Lord BBH playing it. And that was supposed to originally be for the Halcyon. And I'm drawing a blank on what it is. It's probably in the video you you put you sent to me there. So I actually have it um, on my watch later list. So I'll check it out after stream. If there's not a run on AGDQ that I'm missing. All right, so let's give this a little spinny spin. So, you get to pick your character, and you always pick Fang because he's the coolest person, coolest looking person. There's Quest, there you go. Yeah, I've seen Lord BBH play it on his stream before. I was like, holy crap, did he get like a prototype of it or so? Because that guy has like everything. A man robots running rampant throughout the city. I want you to proceed to the area ASAP and restore order. It's got a cool intro though. I mean, oh. smashing everything. Oh. The old Genesis sound. It's got good music though. But I mean, the voice samples are garbage, which is typical Genesis. I actually did beat this one back in the day. I don't know how I did it, but I did. <laughs> it's like. Like I said, I'm, I'm not that good at Contra games, so... Oh no, I forgot. So you can pick up different... Um, you can pick up different armed, like, different weapons and naturally switch to them back and forth. It would have been great if this was, like, actually Spud to McKenzie. There was, like, a tie-in for Bud Light. But this is actually one of the first games I remember playing on early emulators. So I was like, holy crap, I can play games. I can play Sega Genesis games on my computer. Same thing for like Super Nintendo. I mean, those emulators were all the brand new thing. This is one of the first games I tried. I'm not sure what we're getting payback for, but we're doing it. Also, I don't think speedrunners play this version of the game. I think they play the Mega Drive version, so that should tell you something. <laughs> like, this game is just too damn hard. There we go. Someone set us up the bomb. Oh, I missed time to jump. Yeah, exactly. It's like you get different layouts, and then even if I remember correctly, when you play the game, you can also pick different ways you can go through. Like you can you choose this level or another level. And it's such a shame that this was only like for the Sega Genesis, because I think, you know, this really would have been a great multi-platform game. I would love to have this on the Super Nintendo. For me. I just remember that this part has, like, horrible screen tearing. We'll see if the emulator keeps it that way. Nope, there we go, screen tearing. I win. 
mean, yeah, I would. I'm not even gonna come close to stage four. Wasn't there a way to combine like all these guns together? I thought. This is the awesome one. Yeah, when I beat this, this was like 20 years ago, so... I will probably not even get past the first level or even close to it. Thought man robots, somebody is inside that thing! A small child, yearning to be free. So, yeah, so that's the American version. Let's try the Japanese version. These are not the right. Okay, let's change the core. Core Association Pico. Yeah, that's a little bit better. That's closer to 4x3, what it should be. What really drives me nuts is when I see somebody playing an old game. And they're like, it's a 4x3 game and they're, they're playing it in like 16x9 just stretched out. And they're like, oh, what's wrong with it? It looks fine. I'm like, the game looks like garbage. Format it right. Get out there and die for me. Yeah, so if you look underneath, like, where it says shot in the upper left-hand corner, you have three little bars. That is your life bar. You can actually take hits now. I don't know why they made the game harder for the United States. It's... It really does not make sense to me. Yeah, like right there, I took a hit, still alive. I don't know, I like it. I think it's kind of cool. Or at least they could have given us, like, the option, you know? Yes, that's what bugged me too, is like, you just, you run into a guy accidentally and you just die. It's like you have brittle bone disease. But like, you're being beaten down so bad you have no choice but to send him in. I also think the game is easier too, and I mean, not just like the health bar wise, but like people dying faster. Oh, I mistimed that one badly. But hey, you still have your gun though, you still retain it. No, I'm still interesting. So I felt I just lost the health life, but not my actual life itself. I think too, like when you die, I think you respawn back in place too. Like it's been a long time since I played the Japanese version. Yeah, so you just instantly pop right back down. Now this one life, then you're dead type deal.
Kill him, son. See, I'm wondering if it's like like what happened with Devil May Cry 3 when they brought it to the United States because like the Japanese very hard mode became our normal mode. It was like just way too hard for a lot of people and that's why they re-released the game as Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition which put the level of difficulty back down to what it's supposed to be. The Japanese version basically it's like we basically got the Japanese version as the Special Edition. So... You know, they accidentally, for whatever reason, set the normal to insanely hard. So this is where you get to choose where you would go in the path. So the level splits there, so you can pick if you where you want to go. And I have no idea what I just picked. Oh look, it's the uh, buildings from Blade Runner. In the future, everything will be pyramids. So you have to shoot the bad guys and they fall into that. Okay. Sir, I need you to stop, please. This is a serious fighting jet, not a playground for you. Just murder the Rocketeer. Oh, speaking of a turd game, the Rocketeer for Super Nintendo. Oh my god. You know, a guy let me borrow that one time. I'm like, yeah, I'm not talking to you ever again. This game sucks. <laughs> it is like legendarily bad. Yeah, that's not gonna work. This will be better. I think they got ran away because they think I had more werewolf or something. It's a werewolf run! We don't we didn't pack our silver bullets. Sexuality is Jennifer Connelly in the Rocketeer movie. I mean, she was the high point of the film, but everything else just did not make sense. I mean, even from a physics standpoint, I love it. Like one point, they're trying to get away, so the truck won't go. So what does he do? He braces himself to push the the truck, and he turns on his rockets, and it's like a rocket-powered car. Whereas in actuality, it would just like pull him into the car and kill him instantly. The car would not have moved at all, maybe a foot. And he would have died a horrible, horrible death. But yeah. That's movie physics for you. But yeah, the the Rocketeer, I'll just show you the insanity that is the Rocketeer on Super Nintendo. If you've never seen it before, I'm not sure if it's under R or the... Let's take a look. Nope, here it is. This game defies all reasonable thought.
It sounds terrible. This is what it sounds like. So you're thinking, okay, Rocketeer, you're running around punching people, shooting stuff. No. The first levels, even though you're, you've been told you got the new rocket pack working, we'll want you to fly it, but you need to win two races in an airplane. So you have to fly. <laughs> Gotta figure out the buttons first. There you go. And then you have to fly around and win a race. Flying race. As you can see, there's like a lower left hand like window. So you want to try to time your turn around that as best you can. While also keeping an eye on where you are up on top on the screen. This is the Rocketeer. A movie where you run around and beat up Nazis with your awesome, amazing flying powers, you're stuck flying a race, which I'm going to lose already. You have to win two of these in a row. And it does not control well at all. So, what's your reward for getting past this part and winning the race, which I'm a lap down already, and somehow have not died from crashing into a pole repeatedly? Well, you get to do a... Wow, everybody just died horribly in a car accident, a tra like a plane accident, apparently. Car accident, I don't know why I said that, but... Then what it does is it moves into like a Cabal-type shooter, or kind of like Wild Arms, but not fun. And there's like Nazis all over the hangar, and you gotta shoot them with your with your gun. You have the rocket pack on, but you don't get to use it. And then after you do that, you go back to racing again. It is like the worst game I have ever played. It is there is no excuse for that whatsoever. All right, but for now, though, we're actually going to play a good Contra. We'll have this be the last game of the night for me. Contra 3, The Alien Wars. This is such a good game. I have it myself. Uh, this is one of the, the physical carts I do own, and my brother and I just play the hell of it. We used to rent it. We didn't own this back in the day, uh, but we would rent it and just play it like crazy. Ooh, Three Stooges for NES. That is another terrible game. That's a That's a good one to bring up. Contra 3. Ah, everything is nice and peaceful in the future. Nothing could surely go wrong. And then one day the Fire Nation attacked. Or Space Devil. I'm not sure which one it is. The Alien Wars Begin It's time for revenge Let's attack aggressively Yeah, this game I love I don't like the Mode 7, like, levels, though. Those parts I, I'm not a fan of, but the rest of the game is pretty fun. Plus, also, you can do this. Or you can just pose and look awesome. Yeah! So, the gimmick for this game is... Wrong button. Is you can switch weapons, you can hold two different weapons, so if you're about to die and you have one weapon you want to keep, you can just switch over quickly and still hold on to it. But of course, if you get like double combinations, you can go crazy like this. So that's homing, I like homing. No, I can't get it! There we go. Yes. Yeah, I really don't like the Mode 7 levels, like I said, it's just... never good at them. That dog screwed me up so much. <laughs> First time I played this, I'm like, what the hell? The dog kills you. It's like, yep. 
in the future, even dogs are murderous. Tanky McTankerton. Kaboom. Oh, missed the shield. like a, a like way you can abuse it like constantly switching back between the weapons like this that will give you like a stronger attack double homing yes please Oh yeah, this is this is an amazing game. I never liked Contra 1 on the Nintendo, my friends were all about it, but it wasn't until like my brother and I rented Contra 3 on the Super Nintendo that we just like, I mean we were getting our butts kicked, but I mean we just loved it. It was amazing just the graphics and everything went on through like this bombing here and then setting the place on fire. It was just like incredible to see. that one. So there was like a two-player A and B. I think this is one of those games where like you could shoot each other. <laughs> I don't know why they why developers keep putting that in their games. Like, you know, people want to play together, but I think we should also be able to shoot each other and like kill them instead. You know, the same thing would happen in like in beat-em-ups, like for Final Fight. You have the same problem, like you're just trying to go through and all of a sudden you start smacking each other. This is back when Konami was actually known for being good, which is kind of mind-blowing now when you think about it. Yes, and definitely not Apache slot games at all. I mean, they are known for quality games. Giving people what they want. I have jumped down too early before and got murdered by that stupid thing. Now, I love the fact that this guy comes back in Contra Shattered Soldier. a better weapon. Grr. Yeah, it's, I like it because it starts off like this. You're like, oh my god, this is such a great flashback throwback, and then you beat it, and then he turns around and he's got this big old butt face. So this is the, like, Mode 7 part of the game, which I am not a fan of. There's another level 2 later on. I think it's, like, level either 4 or 5, I want to say. Probably 4. Which is another top-down level like this. And except for you have, like, spinning floors, so, like, you'll be running around trying to figure your way through. And you'll just, like, suddenly get spun around in circles trying to figure out where you're at. You have to use L and R to turn. Which can be a little disorienting, a little confusing. There we go. You have to destroy all these guys in the pods.
contestants in this are kind of interesting to see because it's like they can abuse like running through and just taking a lot of damage. Uh, they can run across the bridge before it collapses. Oops. I forgot you can duck. Actually, I didn't know you could duck for like years. I just forgot about it entirely too until you just mentioned it right now, Morg. Nobody's photosensitive with seizures. Oh well. Uh, my back is shot anyway, so I'll be ending it. So, discuss some things here real quick as we wrap it up. It's kind of like more like whenever somebody's hiding directly above a bad guy's line of sight like they magically can't sense somebody's there or look up you know like anybody else would walk into a room in their peripheral vision would instantly pick up somebody trying to hide up up top on the ceiling but anyway but yeah we've reached the end of the stream for today you know my pain pills are not working too good I actually need to call the doctor tomorrow he wants me to regardless to uh, let him know if my pain meds are working and they're clearly not uh so they're gonna try to change things up but anyway uh Thanks for hanging out, everybody, especially Nimix, Morg, um, Shiro. Thank you for showing up again there. It's always good. So Yakuza 0 did not work out. That game is uninstalled for my PC, and I will never be playing it again. Uh, so I do need to definitely think of some games or something like that to play on stream that would be kind of fun to do. So if you ever have any suggestions or anything, you can let me know on Twitter. If you have Twitter at Wurzel555. I also post when I'm going to be streaming on there, usually about an hour or two in advance. I always stream every single day, just about 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, or you can also, yeah, there's no way I'm doing a 24-hour stream, big kappa. But uh, you can also whisper me something here on Twitch as well for any type of suggestions that would be kind of fun to play. So I'll be back again tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, awesome Games Done Quick is going on right now, so if you have some money to donate for the Prevent Cancer Foundation, I would definitely recommend that's a good place to be for it. Uh, looks like they're about to play... Now they're playing Metal Gear Solid 2 right now. Or anything in general. So I'll be back again streaming, like I said, I hope. I'll probably be playing Killer Instinct, the new one that came out not too long ago, because I really kind of fell in love with that game. Learned how to play it, been really enjoying it. I might tackle an RPG, uh, Final Fantasy IX. I have not played in a long time, and I don't remember anything about it, so it'd be like completely brand new and blind. But like I said, if you have any suggestions, let me know on Twitter or give me a whisper. And uh, yeah, that'd be kind of fun to do. So thanks for hanging out, and hopefully see you guys all tomorrow. <laughs>